Hi everyone. Have you ever called to the radio looking for the answers to all those political and social questions that you have? This town is under the stranglehold of a few tie-dyed tree-huggers. Yikes. Maybe not this one. Now, I'm not very political. I usually think people who vote are a bit fruity. Well, you guessed it. Today we'll be talking about The Simpsons. It was one of my favorite shows when I was growing up, and it's a real conversation starter. It has been dealing with political issues and with social issues, so I'm really excited to do this one. So let's not wait more, and let's get into it. Today's episode is called Sideshow Bob Roberts. It deals with the issue of political campaigns as a whole. Sideshow Bob, which is one of the main characters, is right now in jail. But he started calling to this radio station and complaining about his situation. He managed to put himself as the victim of the system and all of the situations that he's going on. And he managed to put so much pressure on the mayor, which is a very, very ineffective guy, to actually release him. So he ends up free and then running against the guy who freed him. Let's not get into too many spoilers, and let's just watch it. KBBL Talk Radio, and now Springfield's favorite conservative and author of the well-selling book, Only Turkeys Have Left Wings, ladies and gentlemen, Birch Barlow. Good morning, fellow freedom likers. Birch Barlow, the fourth branch of government, the 51st state. You know, there, there, there are three things we're never going to get rid of here in Springfield. One, the bats in the public library. <laughs> To Mrs. McFeely's compost heap. <laughs> and three, our six-term mayor, the illiterate... He just mentioned the fourth branch of government. For those of you who don't know much about politics, the three main branches of government everywhere in the world is the executive branch, which is the president or the prime minister, the legislative branch, which normally is the parliament, the national assembly, the congress, and the judiciary. And then uh, there is this debate, a uh, philosophical debate about which one is the fourth branch of government, which is supposed to be, uh, in some societies, they said that is uh, the civil sector, the civil society, NGOs, nonprofits that managed to put some pressure on the government. On other societies, especially in America, they said that the fourth branch of government is the media because they keep accountable the ones in government. And in, for example, in Europe, in the Netherlands, for example, they said that the fourth branch of government is the public administration or those who work uh, as public servants because they keep the show going. This sounds awfully controversial. Lisa, you know I don't like controversy in this house. I don't like him either, Mom, but I'm doing a report on local politics for my school project. My mother is just like that. And I know that many actually, uh, many families are just like that. They just said, don't turn on the radio, don't turn on the TV because I don't like controversy. And then they just disconnect themselves because they want to avoid the issues. But that's why I like Lisa, because Lisa is obviously a liberal thinker and she's very progressive, but she's doing a report. So she's trying to understand what is in the other side. So I really love Lisa just because of that critical thinker spirit that she has. So, my friends, let's just junk those dumb mocrats and their bleeding heart smell fair program. All right, my friends, let's go to the phones. First up is Bob from South Springfield. Welcome to you, sir. Hello, Birch. Long time listener, first time caller. Kudos for bringing the public back to the Republican Party. So here it is. Saisha Bob is doing something very interesting. Remember, he's in prison. And what he's doing, he's actually capitalizing on those who have been critical with the government. And then you see this a lot. And that's a very clever thing to do. Many times you're an outsider and you don't have a platform. And then you take advantage of those who have a platform in media or in uh, in any position of influence to push your agenda and then just to show yourself. You see, Birch, I'm presently incarcerated. Convicted of a crime I didn't even commit. So what Saisha Bob is doing here is playing the victim's card. Now, every social leader, every political leader, they need to have a narrative. Rather, you have always a beginning point which shapes your motivation. Then you have a challenge that put on the pressure on what you should do, you have options, and then basically based on those options, you can take an action. But that is very manipulative and that is very bad. 
Well, I've had it. I am going to make it my mission to see that our friend Bob is set free. Very well. If that is the way the winds are blowing, let no one say I don't also blow. By special order of the mayor of Springfield, you are hereby granted a full and complete pardon. I have no idea why people have these crazy thoughts that we working in politics or in social causes are just like thirsty vampires who drink the blood of our opponents and then we're just creatures of the night. It's very disgusting actually. Let's just keep doing this. The mayoral campaign is upon us. And if we hope to defeat this Joe Quimby, we need a candidate with name recognition and media savvy. Marty, I'm way ahead of you. Bob. Bob, come in. A fine mahawk to you all. Now, students, I want you to be on your best behavior for this carefully choreographed media event. Uh, the Simpsons nail a lot on political irony, but it's very funny that they mentioned that this is a very choreographed media event and actually do you see that a lot in the um, in press conferences that they're very very well coordinated and this is not 100 percent bad actually because normally uh media is your channel to communicate with people so if you are a social leader if you have a movement you normally want to have a very very good uh, press conference in order to reach out to the voters so press conferences don't usually just go as smooth and improvise as one may think they're very very well planned young friends my opponent joe quimby is confused about your school system do you know what he does he flip flops Sometimes he doesn't know whether he's coming or going. He wants to sell your future short. This is actually a very funny representation, uh, but then I just want to stop here because what he's doing is obviously an exaggeration, but body language matters so much. If you use your hands, if you use your face to make different expressions, if you actually use a stage and you just don't go and just read uh, something, that is very powerful and that connects with a lot of people. Not only with children, because here is obviously an exaggeration, but body language is a very crazy good element that you need to evaluate. And if you are a social leader, if you're a political leader, a speech is not enough. It has to match your body so you can deliver it more effectively. This is a terrible political ad. Normally political ads should have a more humble tone and less of a me me time and less uh, less of the political candidate on camera and more on community, on issues, on things uh, that are relevant, not only himself. That Quimby fella promised to build us a Matlock Expressway. How are you going to top that, smart guy? Hmm. Well, how's this? I'll not only build the expressway, I will spend the remainder of this afternoon patiently listening to your interminable anecdotes. Hot chicken jam! Me first! A couple minutes ago we were talking about actually pretending to listen and actually listening and then you saw the other candidate as he was mayor just pretending to listen, just to do something a little bit manipulative and then there comes this guy who says, you know what, I'm not here to promise you anything, I'm just here to listen to you and then i'm just going to spend all the afternoon listening to you and see how people genuinely get excited of course this is a reference also to older people liking to share stories but then uh actually this is a very good representation of when you spend time locally in local forums people love that no i own the first radio in springfield weren't much on the air then just Edison reciting the alphabet over and over. Hey, he'd say. 
Then B. C would usually follow. <gasps> I have been in so many forums where you have these uh, very cute uh, people that come to you and then they just tell you, I just want to tell you a very interesting term. You remind me too. And then do you know that this neighbor did this, 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 and then they spend hours speaking to you. And then many times actually it's very uh, problematic because they really want to meet you and they really want to meet the representatives or the people who are visiting. But you have a queue of people and then they normally those want to take just your attention. And then uh, normally what you have to do is to manage to congregate several people together so you can have a circle and then everybody can have a conversation because otherwise people will love to just dominate uh, one topic and then just have a one on one with you. And that is not the best way to spend a campaign time. Mayor Quimby supports revolving door prisons. Mayor Quimby even released Sideshow Bob, a man twice convicted of attempted murder. Can you trust a man like Mayor Quimby? Vote Sideshow Bob for me. Very different political ad. This ad had no sign of Sideshow Bob on it. Instead, it was a very clear representation of the problems that the, that the community faces. So one point for Sideshow Bob here because it has a better political ad than Mayor Quimby. Sideshow Bob, Councilman Les Wyman says that you're not experienced enough to be mayor. Sir, what do you have to say about that? I'd say that Les Wynum ought to do more thinking and less whining. <laughs> This is obviously a prepared question. Uh, and then it's actually very sad because you have all these political uh, commentators and journalists that they will say, I'm an independent and I have no sides, but everybody has somehow a side and then everybody has their biases, especially those working in political institutes. They like to claim their independence, but many times they're actually helping already a political party because that's just their nature. So it's not a surprise that you sometimes are in a debate and then you see that other candidate is receiving a very well prepared question. Uh, that was preparing in advance. What is your uh, question? My question's about the budget, sir. Oh. Something that is very common is to meet with people that they say, I don't care how I will look on TV because this is my authentic self. And unfortunately, that works very well for you, but a lot of people react specifically on how you look well or bad. This is also a reference to uh, the presidential debate between Nixon and Kennedy in the US, which was the first televised um, uh, debate. And then Nixon did that mistake. He was like, I'm not gonna wear makeup. I'm not going to care about how I look on TV because I care about the issues. And then he was just sweaty where Kennedy who was very, very well presentable and he resonated more with people. So just pay attention on how you look on camera. Hmm, I don't agree with his Bart killing policy, but I do approve of his Selma killing policy. So Homer voted for Sideshow Bob. This is very sad. But what I'm more surprised about is that they're actually reading the policies of the candidate. Normally people do not read the policies. They just follow rather their feeling towards the candidate or towards the, or, or towards the party that uh, is representing them. <laughs> And the results are in for Sideshow Bob, 100%. For Joe Quimby, 1%. And we remind you, there is a 1% margin of error. Aww. I didn't remember that actually he, that Sideshow Bob won by 100%. But Quimby here is very sad. And instead, he should be very angry because 100% votes for one candidate. It's obviously a fraud. All right, let's go live to Bob headquarters now for Mayor Terwilliger's victory speech. <laughs> because of time, I'm just gonna dance a little bit on the episode. Basically, after winning, Sideshow Bob decides to tear apart the Simpsons house and then they put an eviction on them after I think three days. So basically what they are starting doing is that Lisa starts trying to identify if there was a fraud or not, if there was a problem with the system and then they find out thanks to an informer that there were actually some suspicious about fraud. 
So they start looking for the evidence and then they bring Bob, who is now the mayor, to trial to testify and to see if there is a fraud or if not, because probably there were dead people and there were people who were not even registered who voted for him and that's how he won. Mr. Mayor, is it true you rigged the election? No, I did not. This is a very silly question, but if you would be on a trial checking on the results, you kind of need to ask this question to start and to set the tone. It is a must. I have a plan. I think we can trap him. But Joe Bob, I believe you when you say you're innocent. Indeed I am. Because we all know you're a naive pawn, puppet, if you will, of the most diabolical political genius Springfield has ever known. Birchibald T. Barlow! <laughs> <laughs> Lisa is very clever. There is nothing that upsets more a politician than to say, this was not your idea. You're just a puppet. And then there's actually a very good reaction. And then you will see it a lot in debates and then uh, in media that they are sorry to, uh, when they use the word puppet as a trigger word for those who have a very big ego in politics. Only I could have executed such a masterpiece of electoral fraud. And I have the records to prove it. Here, just look at these. They got him. Bailiffs, place the mayor under arrest. What? Oh, yes. All that stuff I did. I haven't watched this episode in some good 10 years. But despite the fact that I agree with the fact that obviously Sideshow Bob went back to prison, uh, I do think that he would have won the election quite easily. He had a better campaign, he had better methods than Queen Bee, and yeah, he had a criminal record, but Queen Bee is not a saint. And actually those six time mayors, um, they're actually quite problematic in my view. I can't believe a convicted felon would get so many votes and another convicted felon would get so few. Overall, the episode gives us a very good view on what political campaigns are. I think that I want to tackle on a few uh, specific points. The first one is on the importance of uh, having a narrative. Uh, Saisho Bob obviously has this victimization narrative, but anyone who wants to connect and wants to lead and wants to be in a position of power has to have a very clear narrative and then they have to have a very clear struggle. For Sideshow Bob, it was to be in prison, to be a victim of the system. But many times for us, it's actually being victims of the situations, if not of the system. Second of all, I want to put a lot of emphasis on the political communication aspect of this episode. There were many lessons on the debate, on the campaign trail, and on the forums on body language use on how to continue relations with media and then in order to have this cooperation even on the debate and how to frame yourself for example in the political ad not being focused on yourself but focus on the people and lastly this episode also gave a very good insight of how media relations work and how they matter actually for social leaders, for influencers, and for people who want to make a social change. Many times we undermine media and we say we want to, to do this alone, but no. I think that Bob here was connecting uh, with, for example, with this Rush Limbo type of character. Many times we have interviews. We have to make ourselves present because we need to better outreach our message. If you don't care about media relations, then your cause might not be the best one um, to reach out to people and to engage people. All right, you heard the man. So overall, I think that this was a very good episode and despite the sarcastic tone and obviously the, the political jokes, it was quite close to the reality. So I'm very happy for this instance that actually they bring up these perspectives. But what do you think? Leave a comment on the comment section and maybe suggest me what other episode of The Simpsons or another series should I be reacting to. Subscribe, hit the bell, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.